the greatest love is really to fall in love with yourself and that's what you're going to do and I believe you're going to fall in love with what you create and you're going to fall in love with your legacy and it's from being in love with yourself that you draw in a great love but honestly you'll still love being in that edit bay watching yourself more than you'll love him <laughs> oh. Good morning, my friend, and welcome now to Tuesday. Well, today, Sensei says we cross the bridge to a new reality. And it's not just a change of your reality, it's a new deal with yourself. From my smartphone to yours, keep streaming for your Tuesday Namaste today. Namaste today, a fascinating way to kick off a loving day. I'm your host and spiritual life coach, Sensei Chris Watecki. I call myself a psychic astrologer, I consider myself a spiritual philosopher, and yet I am a student of enlightenment. But I am grateful that you're walking with me today, my friend. Namaste, and welcome now to Terrific Tuesday. Well, today I think we cross a bridge. This is really the beginning of an eclipse. We have a lunar eclipse on Friday. And all the way through the weekend, I think we're going to be doing dimensional shifts. That means we're going to be spiritually promoted or demoted, depending on what our next learning cycle is. And I believe today we cross the bridge into that unknown, which is our self-expansion. Now, self-expansion is the key. Jupiter is in Libra. And so I think in many ways, this new reality we see ahead of us is actually a new day with ourself. So in today's Megascope, I'm going to give you some clues on how to embrace that new mirage. But first, let's take a look at your zodiac weather. This zodiac weather is for Tuesday, September 13th, 2016. Looking ahead at the five day mood cast. Well, today we cross a bridge. Tomorrow on Wednesday, the energy will go quantum. On Thursday, I predict cloudy but feeling rather graceful. And on Friday, it's sunny and disjointed. It's a lunar eclipse. Today, I predict sunny and hopeful. It's step 21 when it starts to get fun. The Great Human Walk has reached step 21 Virgo, which I affectionately call the bridge. This means our ruling channel is channel 3, I believe. And this means the ruling planet today is Jupiter, which has moved into Libra if you hadn't gotten the headlines. Now, our emotional focus is definitely spaced out and detached today. We're in Act 1 of the moon in Aquarius, so we're getting comfortable in our own skin, basically. And our mental focus under this Mercury Metrograde is rethinking what we want to manifest. Mercury has stepped back to Step 19 Virgo. So today, I argue, you're going to cross the bridge into a new you. And that new you is a view of you, what I call your me ridge. So in today's Megascope, I'll give you some tips on how to embrace this Jupiter and Libra new me ridge. But first, grab yourself some tea, and let's have our daily tea time. Hello, my friend, and welcome to our tea time. Today's tea time topic is theories of astrology part one. And I bring this up because uh, a lot of people ask me over the years what my beliefs are about astrology, about where astrology comes from, how it works, does it work? This is a common question. And I realized, you know, I should put it out there and tell you guys what I think. I think I'm so busy reporting the planet sometimes, I, you know, I forget that we should sometimes talk about the whole premise. And for someone who's new to the topic, I'd love to be your first impression. So this is one of three. I'm going to record three of these in a row and, uh, because I think it's uh, easier to digest and learn and take little bites between the day. And I hope you enjoy the topic and I hope it answers a lot of questions you might have about astrology, particularly Western astrology. Now, uh, my argument is, is that it's kind of an unfair argument. Science has always kind of like spun astrology as some wacko science, uh, that believes the planets have an effect on us. Um, and the only thing I say to science is, you don't know our history, okay? Our astrological history of how we got to this point. The truth of the matter is, is astrology goes way back to, to Babylon. Our first record of it is in uh, 1700 BCE, before Christ era. So that was a very long time ago. And 
it looked like that uh, in the records that are written that uh, that uh, kings and emperors, rulers basically, were using astrology as a means of signs from the gods. Like there must be, this is a sign of something happening and as another sign of something to happen and looking as kind of fortune. But then really in Mesopotamia, that's really, really it got embraced, uh, what we know today as Western astrology and also what we know as the zodiac uh, signs. Okay, this all came out of uh, ancient Mesopotamia between 1950 and 1651 BCE. And I'm just quoting it because I looked it up so all you people who are interested can have it. And during this time, this is where the popularized understanding of astrology, and then the Greeks picked up on this later. So this is the source of it. And I have some psychic intuition about it myself. I've also done my own discoveries of it. One thing that one must understand is that, uh, that, that during that time, there wasn't a calendar. Okay, Human beings looked to the stars to know what time it was. Every night, they would know what time of the year it was. So the first thing you need to know is that the zodiac glyphs that you know are simply monthly markers. They're a marker of stars. They were designed to be kind of like so that they could remember it and it was a way of drawing a sign so that they could remember, oh, it's this time of year. Oh, it's that time of year. Oh, it's this time of year. Okay? And this has to do with uh, the sign that's rising on the equinox. Okay? So uh, they began to tell time through these different zodiacs and they also, it's I think backwards that people don't understand. It's like, it's not that people thought the stars had a, an influence on the people. It's that uh, when two men maybe were talking about uh, their families and their legacy and whatnot, they would say, you know, Bob, have you ever noticed that everyone, uh, every time babies are born under this time of the year, they are warriors, Aries? And that's what they started to notice. They started to notice that certain kinds of people always came up during certain crops, okay? And they were using it to literally when to plant their food and when to plant their crops by the lunar cycle. And they were using the lunar moon on when to plant. But they're also using this bigger year-round system of when to plant their wife pregnant. Okay? So the men would want to get their wives pregnant to bring a certain personality. For instance, if you wanted to have a warrior spirit in Aries, then you must plant the seed in Cancer. Okay, like, that will bring a warrior, fighter, child, man, maybe a man. You know what I mean? Like, but if you want a Taurus, then you plant the seed in Leo. And it's interesting because if you know astrology, it's like, oh, so I have to make love in Leo to create a Taurus. Or I have to make some saucy love in Cancer to create an Aries. And it tells you with the kind of human planning system. So I believe that, you know, over time, uh, this, you know, the ancient Mesopotamia, basically, where this, where this all started and then it passed to the Greeks, they use the different astrological glyphs as little memory things in their head, like drawing stars. Like the stars are all, you know, a big pictogram. Well, just go ahead and draw a shape and recognize that shape every year, every month when it comes up again. It was a simple way of human beings tracking that time of year. And I believe that they were trying to create certain types of human beings, trying to create certain kinds of crops, trying to, trying to grow and using all that knowledge. Now, they also, it looks like uh, at that time, you know, noticed the planets uh, the visible planets, that is, and they also noticed that there were these bigger cycles and circles that humanity uh, went through. And I believe, uh, you know, and this was the prediction of, of hard times, easy times, and whatnot, because uh, from observation, every time Saturn is that, at that part of the clock, shift happens. We just noticed it, you know what I mean? Like, every time. It's not a coincidence. It's almost to them was like, you know, it was almost like a clock chiming, and I think that was true, too. Uh, for the ancient Mayans as well. The Mayans, as you know, had their own astrology. In fact, there's Western, there's Vedic. Uh, in the next little webisode of astrology, I'm going to talk about the uh, procession of the equinox and explain a little about that myth. But I want to begin it with astrological, uh, ancient uh, astrology theory. And to me, it was that we knew we wanted to create certain types of children, and we were paying attention to the crops and the years and uh, when to plant all of our seeds, literally and figuratively, right? With that, I will uh, toast to you, take a little sip of tea, and channel for you what I call the Megascope. This is where I'm going to connect to my guide, sl uh, slip over to my left side of my brain, and see what advice I might have for you in this very cosmic and interesting time. It's peppermint tea, by the way, for those who are curious. My voice is in and out right now. Mm. 
So I asked uh, Spirit what to talk about. And really, Spirit was saying that the focus of today really has to do with the moon. I was being shown the moon, the moon in Aquarius. And then I was shown that really getting emotionally comfortable with your uniqueness is really the goal. Getting comfortable with your uniqueness. Um, Just being comfortable being you. When you know how it feels to be you and you embrace how it feels to be you, that's the rock. That's what holds you together in times of change. Uh, And so settling into that cozy being you and enjoying being you, uh, which is the reflective Aquarius off of the Leo, that's what Spirit says uh, is the spiritual posture to try to take for the day. Now, that said, I have a little help uh, talking about Jupiter and Libra. I think a lot of this change deals with the expansion of our relationship to ourself. And so we're learning to approach ourselves in a new way. Jupiter has not been in Libra for 12 years. So in 2004, 2005 was the last time you updated your Miraj and what I call your Miraj vows. And so I want to give you uh, uh, a little advice on opening up to the new view. And notice I spelled V-Y because I think who we are is the perspective we take. Step one, do you just make time for you? If you don't take time for you and have sacred time for you and know that it's your time, whether it's in the bath or with Bella or in the garden, if you don't take that time for you, uh, then you are not going to be driving this change. You're going to be a passenger. Okay, so take time for you. Step two, in that time, how do you treat yourself? How have you been treating yourself? And this is a question to ponder for a while, seven to ten days. How do you treat yourself? Step three, how should you treat yourself? <laughs> okay, like, so you want to identify how you've been treating yourself and how you think you might want to treat yourself and start processing on that. We'll pick up this topic again in a couple of days. For those who are watched over uh, by my personal sensei service, we call them serious joiners. They're serious about their growth. Today, a little psychic gossip, psychic gossip in the sense of the Middle East. I want to talk about what I'm picking up in the, uh, with the Middle East. And these topics are so sensitive, I'll never put them on the YouTube service, folks. So you must be a subscriber for it. And today at 3 o'clock, I will talk about your new Miraj vows. What I believe your new Miraj vows might be upgrading and what they were uh, when you were born. So what were they when you were born? What did you agree to when you were born? And now maybe how are you potentially upgrading? For those watching on YouTube, please be kind and to uh, do subscribe. We thank you ahead of time. And if you'd like to follow me on Twitter, my handle is Siwateki. And my specialty, spiritual technology. If you'd like to learn more about the bright star you really are, come give Serious Joy a try. In fact, if you sign up right now, and I'll talk about this, uh, you'll be entered to win one of four readings that I'm giving away for new subscribers or two new subscribers here in the Retrograde Energy. So give it a try. Okay, it's a wonderful new way to open up your perspective to yourself. I have a lot of great technology at work here. And uh, the last thing I want to say, oh, is that I love you, as you probably well know. Stand in your heart, my friend. Remember I love you, and I'll see you tomorrow with more. Until then, live, love, be.